In section 5, we finish up module 3, and we'll be dealing with formulas, applications, and variations. So to get started, we'll look at solving these particular equations for a particular letter. So we'll uh, start off with writing this out nice and big. 2x, and you're going to do this on the other side or wherever you have room. Now you want to solve for this letter y, and you want that y to be positive. So a suggestion would be transpose it. On this side it becomes a positive y. Transpose the 7, that becomes a negative 7, and you have the 2x that's still there. Now to get y by itself, we're going to divide every term by 4. And now we have y, and we usually write the x term first. That's going to be 1 half x minus 7 fourths. And you might recall this from an earlier chapter. This is an equation in standard form, and here this is in slope-intercept form. This is your slope, and there's your y-intercept. Now in letter B, and I'll write that out large too so you can see it better, V sub O is one symbol that's for initial velocity. Now, we're solving it for V sub O, or initial velocity. So what we want to do first is get this term over to the other side. So we just transpose it and change its sign. And that equals V O that's V sub O for initial velocity. Now perhaps what I should have done first, uh, since we want to get rid of the fractions, is to multiply every term by 2. I could have done that before, but it's okay to do it now. So we'll multiply this by 2, multiply this term by 2, and multiply this term by 2. So each term by 2. So here the 2's cancel, and in a sense we can just eliminate that now through the magic of an eraser. So this is what we have. Now to get the VO, V sub O by itself, we're going to just divide out the 2 and the t from this side. And we bring a big long line, division bar, we're going to divide both sides by 2t. So now the 2's cancel out, the t's cancel out, and we get vo equals this. And that looks good. Okay. Now, for these uh, next two problems, we're going to be looking at what is called direct variation. Now, a general formula for direct variation is y equals kx. So this was very similar to that slope-intercept, y equals mx, where m was the slope and our k here is the constant of variation. So if it's direct variation, this is the equation you want to work with. So let's read it carefully. If the distance traveled at a given speed d, so we're going to change letters now, we're going to call this d, varies directly as the time, and we'll call this t, but we need to put in our k there for the constant of variation. 
and Joseph can travel 20 miles. That would be our distance where we put a 20 in there. We don't know what our K is, but in one half hour for time, how far will he travel at the same speed in 2.5 hours? Well, we have to find out what K is, our constant of variation. So what would you do here? Well, you'd want to get rid of fractions. So we just multiply both sides by 2, and we get k equals 40. So we now have our constant of variation that we can put in our direct variation formula that d equals our k value now is 40 times the time. So now we're going to substitute 2.5 for the time. Do this multiplication and we get D equals 100 miles. So 2 times 40 is 80 and then half of 40 is 20 so that gives us 100 miles. But we use the formula for direct variation. We knew what D was. We knew what T was. We didn't know what K was. K is the constant of variation. So we substituted for D, substituted for T, found out what K was, and then we use that in the next example to find uh, the distance with this amount of time. All right, let's go on. Now, again, in letter B, they're saying we have direct variation. So we write the formula y equals kx. Now what they do is they give us a value for y, which is 15. We don't know what k is. And they give us a value for x, which is 3. Now, we solve for k by dividing both sides by 3. And we get k then, after these cancel out, is equal to 5. Now, keeping this as our basic formula, what will be the equation of variation then? Well, you then go back to your y here. But now we know what k is. k is 5. And this is our equation of variation. And this is very typical of the kind of problems you get like this. Here, your main formula, your general formula, y equals kx. They're going to give you a value for y, a value for x, you solve for k. Once you find k, you then put it back into the equation, replacing k with a known value that becomes your equation of variation. Now, keep in mind, direct variation has the formula y equals kx because now we're going to do inverse variation. And the formula for inverse variation is y equals k over x. So anytime you want to find x, or I should say k, you just multiply both sides by x, and you get k will always equal the product of x and y. But the basic formula for inverse variation is y equals k over x. So now let's read this and see if we can set up an equation in this form 
using the letters that they ask us in this example. So the energy of a photon of light, we're calling that E, varies inversely, so we use this relationship, K over its wavelength, W. So now take this information and put it in this formula to see if you can find out what K is. And remember, K is X times Y, or E times W. So the energy is 6.2, and the wavelength is 200. So we just, in a sense, can cross multiply. K is 1240. So now we want to find what would the energy be if it has this wavelength. So we put it in our formula, E equals, we have a value for K now, which is 1240, divided by 120. So E here will equal, and I have my little calculator, And it's 10 point three 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 that repeats, or another way of writing it is 10 and one third e v, which is the symbol they're using. So once again, they're telling you this is an inverse variation. So in your notes, for inverse variation, you should have this formula. Then they will give you specific letters they want you to use, that the energy is inversely proportionate to the wavelength. That's your next formula. You then substitute your energy value, your wavelength value, you can cross multiply and get what K is. This gives you your inverse variation equation. You put in the new wavelength that you have, and it'll give you your energy. So there's a series of steps, but not too difficult. So in part B, we're still with inverse variation. So let's put it here. Y equals K over X. Now they say gravitational force, which we'll call G. We have to put our K. Varies inversely as the square of the distance. So this will be distance squared. So there's your inverse formula where we've modified the letters. If the force of two objects three meters apart is this, so our gravitational force is 300. We're going to put K there. And it's 3 meters apart. 3 meters, but what do we have to do to that distance? Square it. What is the force when the distance is 30 meters? Well, we have to determine what K is first. So this becomes a 9. And 9, we can just cross multiply. 9 times 300 is 2700. So we now can substitute here that G equals 2700. We've determined what K is by filling this formula in. And now our new distance is 30 meters, but we have to square that. So we're going to divide 2700 by this. And when we do that, it ends up being 3. And you could put the unit of energy there. So once again, inverse variation. Put the letters 
from the information they give you, substitute the values, find what K is. Once you find what K is, you put in your new information and then they'll get your new answer. Now here we're having joint or compound variation. Here we're saying that Z varies jointly, but you need to put the K in there. Remember the K is always on top as X and the square root of Y and that's basically all you need for this. So Z varies directly K always goes in the numerator as the X and the square root of Y. So what we need to do first here is put our values in and solve for K. So let's see what we have. So for Z we're going to substitute 20. We don't know the K. X is 5 and Y is 4. What is the square root of 4? 2. So 2 times 5 is 10. So we have this so far. K 10. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. How do we solve for K? Well we divide both sides by 10. So we get K equals 2. We now put that here. Z equals 2 for K. And our new value for X is 16. And our new value for Y is 9. So what is the square root of 9? 3. And we can do this in a couple of stages here. 2 times that is 32. 32 times 3, which is the square root of 9, is going to be 96. And that's your answer. So once again, we had a combined variation. We had to put, this is a modified combined variation, direct variation. We have to put the K in there always. That's what we have to find. The constant of variation. We substitute with the numbers we know and then once we solve for K we, ha we have our equation of this variation. Put in our other values and then we end up with the new C in a sense. Okay, now in your practice in Quizmes, you'll be getting a variety of, of uh, questions. Here we're just giving you the general pattern of how to solve it. So here they're saying W varies directly, so we have to put the K in, directly is the square of Z, so z squared and inversely as x and y. So we put that x and y down there. So this is our general formula. This one has some direct variation and some inverse or indirect variation. The k is always up there. So now we're going to substitute for these letters. Let's see if I can do it live. The W is 16 equals K. Now Z is 4. Put that in parentheses. And our X is 1. And our Y is 2. Okay, here we have to solve what is K. 
Well, we square 4 and get 16, and then divide it by 2. So we're going to end up with 16 equals k8. Well, we divide both sides by 8, and we get k equals 2. So now that we know that k equals 2 here, we start to substitute again. So we want to find what w is. k is 2. Now our new z is 5 that we're going to square. And our new x is 5. And our new y is 2. So, what do we get? This is 25 times 2 is 50. I'm not showing every single step, and this is 10. So what is 50 divided by 10? It is 5. And that's the answer to 4b. Again, it has, you just read it, the key to all this, though, is you have to put the k, the constant of variation in the formula, and find out what that is. Okay, our last example is this table here. And we're looking to see whether the data indicates direct variation or inverse variation. Now, if we study that a little bit, an interesting thing happens. Every time we multiply these, we end up with 36. Which formula did we say when we went for the constant of variation always equals the product of xy? Which is what we see here. And that is the inverse variation formula, which is y equals k over x. Or we said that k was equal to just cross multiplying xy. Now, what they're asking here is what is k? Well, k is the product of x and y. x times y, x times y. So our formula then will be y equals 36, which is the product of x and y. Here they're using a z, but that's okay. Over x. So if our new x is 8, what will be our y? And our y here is going to be, 8 goes into there, 4 and 1 half, or 4.5 times. Okay? Now, if you reduced it the other way, uh, 4 goes into there 9 times, 4 goes into there twice. So, you could think of it this way, this way, or this way. All right, you'll have your practice. This finishes your module for Chapter 3. And if you want to stay on task and complete the course in one semester, you should be testing on Chapter 3. Uh, don't forget to bring your problems in the lab.